So, Lizanne, I'll kick it off with you. What's, what's your level of risk taking? We had a brutal December and then a very strong, historically strong January. Where does that leave us? So we, uh, about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, we moved our uh, equity tactical recommendation to neutral um, and emphasized the, the benefits of rebalancing that would come with higher volatility. So at the end of last year, with the near bear market we got in the S&P, that gave you an opportunity to use rebalancing to kind of add to positions to bring you back up to whatever your normal equity allocation is. And of course, that's going to vary based on risk tolerance. And I think at this point, there's probably an opportunity now to make sure you're not getting out over, over your skis on the upside. I think a lot of what conspired to hurt stocks last year, certainly tighter financial conditions, Fed policy, the strength in the dollar, many of those have eased. But we, we still have a lot of questions that don't yet have answers, not least being trade. So you're, you're still sounding a little defensive. Jill Carey Hall, any, any more optimism in your outlook for 2019 after we did get a big Fed U-turn and some encouraging news on the economy? Right. I mean, we're expecting upside to equities this year. We have a 2,900 target on the S&P for year end. I think, you know, earnings growth should still be supportive. We're having a decent earnings season so far, coming in a little bit better than, than we expected. Um, so overall this year, we think 5% earnings growth looks reasonable. Um, you know, sentiment still has room for improvement. So overall, valuations have come down, not as stretched as they were, um, you know, a number of months ago. Uh, the, the data has, obviously, Friday, we got some supportive data on the economy. So, so we're still looking for upside to equities this year, but think it's important to, to pick your spots uh, within the equity market. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment, Mona, but just wanted to get your yeah. top line take on the market. Yeah, you know, look, we were down 20% in December, peak to trough. We've recovered about 13% of, of that. We think the next incremental 5 or 10% move on the upside will be more volatile. We have uh, obviously on the horizon not only the February 15th U.S. government shutdown deadline, we have a trade deadline, we have the Fed again in March, and of course somewhere in the back there and there is Brexit as well. So a lot of walls of worry to climb over the next few weeks. Lizanne, um, I guess if we can even for now maybe assume that the floor was the December low, uh, I, I guess I wonder that everyone asking what the, what the ceiling is in that environment, right? Last year we had 20% earnings growth and the stock market went down. This year we're saying 5% could be enough to support the market provided the Fed remains patient and risk taking is there and we can rebuild the valuations. But how do you see that all playing out? Well, well, two things. You had a couple of things happen last year. Obviously, Fed was tightening monetary policy, shrinking the balance sheet. Financial conditions were tightening. All of those tend to put downward pressure on valuations. So I think that was the reason why we saw the P.E. contraction, even though we had such strong earnings growth. I'm, I'm less optimistic about earnings in 2019. If you look at the refinitive consensus for Q1, it's only down at about 1% right now, which is sub the rate of inflation, which means if you're in line with that consensus expectation, you're in negative real earnings growth terms, at least in the first quarter of this year. And I think although an earnings recession is probably, I mean, an economic recession has been pushed out, I think there's a chance of, of some semblance of an earnings recession, at least in the first half of the year. And I'm not quite sure that's built into expectations. The good news is, is a lot of things have reversed such that with looser financial conditions, less tight monetary policy, that's actually putting upward pressure on valuations this year. So it's a little bit of a mirror image in terms of that overall uh, push on valuations. Mona, how much do you expect earnings growth to slow this year? Yeah, you know, our baseline estimate is for 4 to 6 percent earnings growth. We can make the case for mid-single digit stock returns if you have 4 to 6 percent earnings growth, some modest multiple compression again this year, and then maybe a 2 percent dividend yield on top of that. You know, to Liz Ann's point, some of the headwinds are reversing later on this year. Think about the dollar, which is a headwind for global corporations. Uh, think about even the Chinese slowing growth, a slowing economy. That could start to reverse if we see some of the fiscal stimulus measures kick in later on this year. So it, there is uh, room for optimism as we head towards second half of this year. Jill, you mentioned that sentiment has come back. Uh, it certainly was way uh, too pessimistic given the fundamentals in December, it seems. Uh, how much more can we rely on that at this point? I'm seeing some short-term measures where people are kind of feeling good about, uh, about the markets again. Is that a key factor or no? 
Right. Well, I think there's there's certainly more room for equity sentiment to improve when when you look at what, what Wall Street strategists and aggregate are still recommending as a recommended allocation to equities. That's still sub 60 percent. Um, so certainly more room for improvement there and for and for cl- allocation to equities. I think what's going to be really important for the for the earnings backdrop this year is we're watching guidance very closely and, and everything with trade. Um, you know, so far you have seen earnings guidance weak in a little bit, but it's still better than than average usually. Usually corporates set the bar pretty low in January, and, and we're tracking a little better than that. Um, but we have seen CapEx guidance come down a bit. For, for companies that have reported so far, um, you're seeing CapEx growth for S&P 500 companies tracking up about 11% year on year, which is you know a couple percentage points below where it was last quarter. I think if CapEx started to fall off a cliff, if, if there is just continued uncertainty around trade and global growth, that really poses risk to some of the sectors like tech and industrials that, that we do like right now, but are seeing a bit weaker in terms of guidance uh, due to some of these risks. My only question, Lizanne, on your sort of more cautious posture is, are you not encouraged by the Fed's complete change in policy and tone and flexibility around the balance sheet? I mean, haven't we learned over and over in this bull market that when the Fed, you know, provides relief or something that the market wants, usually it's a buy? Uh, you do absolutely tend to get a, uh, a pretty decent rally when you see the Fed go into pause mode. I think if they are successfully engineering a soft landing here akin to what happened in the mid-1990s, then the December low probably holds. But if the reason why they're able to pause now is because we will continue to decelerate into a recession starting sooner than I think what consensus believes, then that's the type of scenario where you're more likely to retest lows. I just think that you have to keep in mind that the Fed opted to raise rates in December Uh, And that was pre the December jobs report. We've now had two strong jobs reports since then. Money supply growth has picked back up. I think if we get a string of these, it's hard to convince me anyway that Mm. the Fed can stay in pause mode. So it is a possibility, I think, that they could have another Mm. hike in them this year. Yeah, certainly a risk. So, So where do you want to be, Jill, in this market? You mentioned you have to pick your spots carefully. Right. It's interesting. We we wrote this report last week mentioning that you know if you think about the the average financial services professional, the, the biggest age cohort, co- cohort right now is your 30-something uh, financial services professional. And many of these uh, people in the industry right now, you know, they the financial crisis was the biggest event of their careers. To them, financials might look uninvestable. They're used to an environment where momentum and growth stocks are outperforming and not value. Um, but, but we think that you could see an environment of higher volatility this year, which is an environment where you don't want to be in momentum stocks. Um, we think higher growth stocks that you know, certainly have some risks there as well. Um, so, so we tend to like stocks that in, a, in an environment where we see a rising cost of capital, stocks that are generating cash, um, high free cash flow, and, and stocks that are high quality, stable earnings, uh, which tend to do well when, when volatility picks up. And this isn't necessarily the same as just low beta stocks, um, financials for for example, have, have some of the best earnings vol- uh, earning stability within the S&P 500, have substantially reduced their leverage. Um, so that's one sector we think looks much better right now that, than it did going into the last crisis. And Mona, just um, before we go, where in the world yeah. makes sense right now? Because obviously the rest of the world let us down into yeah. this tailspin. Yeah. Well, they leave yeah, you know, uh, one thing we've been talking about, and probably even on this show, is a barbell approach to the global economy. So on one hand of that barbell remains the U.S., which probably is still kind of the best on the block. But the other hand of that barbell is EM uh, selectively and China, which should benefit not only from, you know, some of the Chinese stimulus we talked about, but if the dollar doesn't have the same type of rally it had last year, EM tends to benefit. And of course, from a valuation perspective, those sectors tend or those economies look pretty attractive here. So we think it's uh, prudent for investors to have some exposure this year to that, that side of the world as well.